Hello, welcome. This is now question five for uh, Edexcel C3 uh, June 2015 paper. Uh, this question um, gives us this formula here. Uh, we're told x is equal to 4y four, four, uh, takes sine 2y all squared. Um, and we're given a position where it's p and then the y coordinate is uh, pi by 2 or pi divided by 2. Okay, and we're asked to find p. Now, there's two ways of doing this. The long way, in the point, uh, which is quite pointless, because you come up with the same answer, it's doing it the short way. Now, what I originally did with this question, and I could understand many of you doing exactly the same thing, is expanding this and trying to work out and then cancelling down, simplifying, no need. Although, saying that, you probably might not have done this at this stage yet in terms of um, you might not have expanded it yet, but still, no need to expand it ever in this question. So, all we do is simply sub in pi by 2 as y to get x. So, x equals uh, 4y, which is uh, just 2 pi, take sine of 2 pi, which is, sorry, sine 2 y, which is sine pi, uh, all squared. Now, you should know, um, when you type sine pi into your calculator, the same as time pin sine 90, if it's in degrees, and obviously that is zero. Uh, so it just leaves it with x is 2 pi all squared equals x. So therefore x is equal to 4 pi squared. So therefore p is equal to 4 pi squared. Okay, this is quite a nice simple part A. Part B, it says uh, find the equation of the tangent to the curve. Um, tangent, is that right? Uh, I don't know why I'm asking you, because obviously, you know, like you're going to just pop through your head through the camera and go, oh yes, well, it's, uh, it's the tangent. You've got that one absolutely 100% spot on there. Put my <laughs> scheme at me. Yeah. Um, yeah, the tangent cuts the curve at the P axis, so it cuts the curve at P and the Y axis at point A. Use the coordinates, use calculus to find part A. So the first thing we've got to do is find some equation of some of the tangent to the curve at P. So for that we need to, we've got, um, so this is the we've got, so we've got X, or uh, which is 4 pi squared, we've got Y which is pi on 2, but we don't have the gradient. I'm going to call the gradient M. So normally what we do is we do dy dx. However, we haven't got an equation for y, and if you were to try and rearrange that one to get y, the uh, likelihood is, I mean, obviously you would expand it, which is one of the things where I'm saying don't, um, and it would be very hard to, and you'd likely to make a mistake. It's much easier, because we know dy dx is equal to 1 over dx dy, so you flip the fraction, um, you just work out dx dy and do 1 over that. Okay, so dx dy, now there's two ways of doing this. Again, it comes back to not expanding it. You could expand that and, um, you know, differentiate each term and then put, um, you wouldn't need to put dy dx next to it because we're doing dx dy, so the x equation, differentiate it with respect to y. Um, as I said, you wouldn't need to uh, do any of that. Like you, you obviously, then you would simplify it down, sub in what y is and get an answer for the gradient. Very long way, um, and trust me, I tried that. It's much easier to use the bracket rule, which is you times the front of the bracket by the power and reduce the power by 1. So it's 2 times what's inside the bracket, which is 4y take uh, sine 2y. Okay, and I put that in square brackets. And then you times that by the differential of what's inside the bracket. So because these are not, this is not a product, we simply differentiate each term with respect to y. So it's 4 take uh, 2 cos 2y. So remember we've got the 2y in there and we're differentiating sign. Okay, so what I'd first do is expand this first bracket and then expand it all together and simplify it down. So, you know, it's up to you. It might, you might find it easier to just, um, sorry, expand the double bracket originally and do it that way. But, as I said, it's completely up to you whichever way you want to do it. As long as you get the right answer, that's, you know, kind of key. Um, so, therefore, this first expansion is 8y uh, take 2 sine 2y. And we're timesing all of that by 4 take 2 cos 2y. Okay, so now it's just a case of expanding it. Okay, um, so 8y times 4, that's 32y. Um, 8y times 2 cos 2y, which is, sorry, negative 2 cos 2y, which is 
uh, negative 16y um, cos 2y. And then it's uh, 2 sine 2y times 4, uh, so that's negative uh, 8 sine 2y. Plus, because it's negative, 2 sine 2y plus, uh, sorry, times negative 2 cos 2y. So, I mean, you could write that as 2 sine 2y, 2 cos 2y, uh, but I'm just going to write it as 4 uh, sine 2y cos 2y. Either way, it doesn't matter because you're going to have sine times cos, and when you do, because y is pi by 2 and we've got 2y, sine, you should know from um, up here, that's sine pi 0. Uh, which, uh, anyway, and obviously these two are going to cancel out, but we just worked through it as we didn't know that. So, simplify this down. So, sub in what y is, y is uh, pi by 2. So, 32 times pi on 2, take 16 times pi on 2, uh, cos 2y, so it's cos pi. Take 8 sine pi. It just shows that you're actually subbing it in and you're not just assuming it. So, if you do go wrong, it's easy to see where you've gone wrong. So, um, 4 times sine pi cos pi okay so that's just a case now of simplifying this down so that just leaves you with 16 pi take uh, 8 pi cos pi and that's going to be take 0 plus 0 because sine pi is 0 now cos pi if you tap on your calculator you get minus 1 and because this is 16 take 8 pi times cos pi, it's the same as 16 pi, take 8 pi times minus 1, it's a simple case of logic, uh, so you add on 16 pi uh, and 8 pi together, so 16 pi plus 8 pi, so it leaves you with 24 pi. However, you have got to remember what we're still working out here, we're only working out dy dx, and what we actually want is dy dx, sorry, dx dy, and what we actually want is dy dx, so we still have to do 1 over this for the gradient, so therefore the gradient is 1 over 24 pi. Okay, so now we've got all the key ingredients. So the gradient is 1 over 24 pi. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is just rub, quickly rub that off. Um, so I'll just give you a second now to copy that down if, if you, uh, you know, feel the urge to do so. Um, because again, the key bits of information are really at the top of the page, so you don't need much else. Right, hopefully you've got that. Okay, so now we've got the what we're going to do is just put all this information in the form of a curve. Now, as we're not being asked to find the equation of the curve, um, but obviously you do need to, you don't need to put it in the form y equals mx plus c. However, you still follow the standard way of working it out. So y take y1, which is y take pi on 2, uh, equals 1 over 24 pi, brackets x take 4 pi squared. Now, the reason why we leave it in that form is because if we were to try and put it in the form y equals mx plus c or any other variant for that matter, we'd be times in it all by 24 pi. And that would be a bit of a nightmare really because we'd have 24 pi y take uh, 12 pi equals x take uh, 4 pi squared. And it'd be pointless because there'd be no need, it's just an error, an area that you can make a mistake in. And for me, that's not very good. So what we need to do now, that's the, we can leave the equation of the curve as that, because we're not being asked to find it, so who gives one? Uh, okay, so let's go back to the actual question, you know, the, the thing we're trying to answer, kind of important. Okay, so really you don't need any of that x, y business, because we've got it all here. The tangent to the curve at P, which is that, um, cuts the y-axis at the point A. Now it cuts the y-axis, that's when x is 0, so we need to make x 0. Use calculus to find the coordinates of A. Now, obviously, if it cuts the y-axis, x is going to be 0. So it's 0, whatever coordinate y is. And seeing as x is 0, we sub it into this formula here. So, um, if x is 0, y take pi on 2 equals 1 over 24 pi times 0, take 4 pi squared. Okay. Um, expand that out, obviously. So, therefore, y take pi on 2 is equal to 4 pi squared over 24 pi. So therefore y is equal to 4 pi squared over 24 pi plus pi on 2. Okay, now you could simplify that down if you want, want to. Um, 
but you know that's totally up to you. Um, so just relevant potential marks to the damn question. Uh, okay, so this is question five. Um, so why is this essentially one over six pi? Sorry. Plus pi on two. Uh, so that therefore, we simplify it down, we get pi on 3 as a y coordinate. Okay, so we know uh, x is 0, so it's 0 pi on 3 is coordinates of a. Okay, so you see how it was actually required to uh, work this out. But for a high, uh, for a question 5, uh, you probably they just expect you to get that. Okay, so um, that's question 5 out of the way, let's say uh, nice 7 marks there. Again, um, as I said, you could have expanded this and it would have made it just a lot more complicated, a lot more likely to make a mistake. Um, the only thing I probably wouldn't have spotted, uh, I didn't spot, is that sine pi is zero. Um, so it is always worth, because the question one is only worth one mark, so doing that is only worth one mark. If you'd expanded it and left sine pi, so um, in the case of how I did it, uh, you would have been left with uh, 4 pi squared plus sine squared pi, take 4 pi sine pi, you would have got zil, zero, zilch, nothing, the square root of jackal. That is because, what you're actually, I mean, it is correct, no, don't get me wrong, if you'd expanded that and just left sine pi and sine squared pi as I did, um, because obviously I wanted to show you how to go wrong, as I always do, quite a generous soul, um, you wouldn't have got the answer. Even though you are right, technically, because you put 4 pi squared, uh, was it, take, uh, plus, plus sine squared pi, take 4, 4 pi sine pi, because you've got that extra bit, that looks the examiner, because it says the, as simple as possible, I think, that's, but you should do, anyway, um, it's a very long coordinate for P, you think, well, this is an X coordinate, this is a very long X coordinate, I mean, alarm bells should be ringing, obviously they didn't for me, because I'm a little bit on the, um, abnormal side of things, but whatever. Uh, so anyway, that's just kind of clarify that. So you need it directly 4 pi squared and not what I put uh, um, to get the marks. This, um, well, should say tangent. Uh, some of you might have tried to work what this is, um, but again, just an area from mistake, uh, and you just need to label that as coordinates for A. So really, a nice six mark. I mean, you're never going to get a six mark that's easy, but for six marks, that's quite a nice one. Really, all it is is uh, working out the equation of a curve and it's, this is C1 knowledge really, this is really, once you've done this and worked out the gradient, um, I guess that is actually quite a, sort of a nasty, well, I don't know, average six mark really, um, I guess uh, most of it, you can see how we build on from C1, um, even though this is C3, it's very closely linked to it, um, so it's always good to go back and uh, revisit with revisit your C1 notes, um, you know, if you're doing this. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully, you know, um, got a bit of a head start on any mocks that you might be not doing at all. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.